Hello again, class. I'll get a little sunlight coming in here at an angle. Let me see what I can get. All right, I'm going to tilt this a bit. Let's see how that works out. That's better. Let's close the curtains down. Okay, I'm going to talk about a little bit about math for plumbing. Now, the plumbing math sheets that I have, the same ones that have been in use since, at least since I was teaching school, which was uh, starting in 1984. So they go back pretty far. And I remember these formulas go back you know, well before that. So uh, we'll start off with the uh, measurements. Now, I know most of this is something that we're all familiar with from grade school days. And uh, so let's get started. Okay, we have a yard. One yard. Three feet. Now, what I'm not going to cover is uh, metric. All right, when they do mention metric, I will cover it. But fortunately for us, unlike auto mechanics that have to have like two sets of wrenches, was it SAE and metric? We don't do much with the metric at all. Okay, a little bit with Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius with a temperature, but for the most part, we stay clear of it, right? So with that, let's get back to, uh, to this here. So one yard equals three feet, right? I think everybody knows that. So let's go right to the square measurements. Now, some of these I know are uh, of no val of little value unless you're going for your license, right? It's not stuff you use every day. Some, yes, but most, not so much. Okay, one square foot. Okay, if you want to make any notes, you know, go right ahead. It's up to you. Uh, a square foot is 144 square inches. It'd be 12 by 12, right? And uh, nine square inches, excuse me. Um, let's see, we have nine square feet. Would be this. Okay, it's supposed to be equal. I think you get the idea. That's a square yard. So it's three by three. Right? Three by three. Square feet. All right? Okay. Now, this one actually is useful. Uh, for those of you who have a house or even an apartment, you probably know that uh, carpet is sold in square yards. That's how you buy carpet, not square feet, it's square yards. So if you had a house where the room was, uh, we'll say, I'm going to make this up. I hope the math doesn't get too tough. 12 by 15. Right, that's the measurement. That's a pretty average size room, I would say. So you just multiply this out. Looking like 180 square feet. Okay. Now, uh, how many square yards is that? Because that's how I'm going to buy it. Okay, so we divide 180 by 9, right? How many of these do you have? So every square, this is a square foot. To get a square yard, I got to divide by 9. All right, so this would be, looks like I, I figured this out in advance. I didn't, I got lucky. All right, it's 20. So when you uh, go to the carpet place, 
you give them the dimensions. My guess is, is just a guess, since this never works out exactly right, they'll probably kick it up, uh, we'll say 10%. So they'll probably throw in an extra 20 square feet to allow for uh, cutting off, whatever. All right, but if you just want the math end of it, all right, 180 uh, square feet, which is this, equals 20 square yards. Okay, so there's an example of where you can actually use this, where it's useful outside of class. All right, that's a square yard. Not too bad. I think most of you knew how to do that anyway. Now, if you're buying tile, um, I did buy some myself for my, my basement, and uh, it was square feet, right? So the only thing I could think of would be square yards, would be carpet for a house. Okay, moving on. Uh, this one out in the carpet business. Okay, now this one here, to me, is, I hate to use the word useless, but it's strictly code. Uh, one cubic foot. equals 1,728 cubic inches. Okay, so what this is, is looking at it from the side, we have a perfect cube, right? And it's 12 high. All right? So I, 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 if I draw this, it's going to be a mess, and it take a long time to draw with a ruler. But just imagine that this is 144, excuse me, that each one of these rows, I'll just do this with the first one. This row here, six, seven, something like that. This has a 144 little blocks, little one inch blocks to make this bottom row here. We're looking at it from the side. If you go 12 high, that's where it comes out to the 1728. So it'd be 12 times 12. Right? Times 12 again. So the first row, we got 144 little one inch blocks uh, covering it. And then if you made it 12 high, all right, like this, eight. So this is 1728. So this would be like little toy blocks, some kids' blocks. If you had 1728 of them, they would fit in a perfect one foot cube like that. Okay, what's it good for? I don't know, test question. I've never used it for anything, but there it is. Okay, all I can tell you is memorize this and be able to apply it if they ask you how many cubic inches, you know, multiple choice question in, um, three cubic feet. So it'd be three times this here, right? But just remember this. All right. Now, if you really want to get tricky, uh, how many cubic inches in a cubic yard? That's a lot of cubic inches. So it'd be one cubic foot is this. So a yard, remember, is, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, how many cubic, uh, excuse me. How many one cubic foot equals this many cubic inches. All right. Now, we'd have to get into square yards and so on, so let's not go there. All right, so let's just stay with this here. A cubic foot, 1,728 cubic inches. I'm going to have to do cubic yards first before I can do the inches. All right, next one. Let's take uh, how many cubic feet in a cubic yard? All right, this one could be a little iffy. Let's see what happens. Okay, there's a three by three, right? There's my, uh, how many square feet and square yard? All right, now let's make it a cubic yard.
Is that right? Not so good at this cubic yard stuff. Top pot's not working out too good. But uh, you get the idea. We have uh, something like that. We got three rows, 20, I can't get this top right, sorry. Uh, anyway, three rows of nine. It's kind of, the math is very easy. So three times three times three deep. Gonna have to go with the roof off, okay? So if you're making an igloo, one foot blocks, you do uh, three times three like this. And if you want to go three deep, you go three by three by three Oops. equals 27 cubic feet. Okay. So one cubic foot. Excuse me, 27 cubic feet equals, big one here, cubic yard. Okay? It's actually very easy. My, sorry about the sketch. So it's one row of three, one high, nine square feet by nine cubic feet, and then three high gives you 27. Now this one also uh, does come into play for... Uh, real life beside the book it's 1728 cubic inches I haven't seen that one this one yes not too much but uh if you do own a house and you want to do some landscaping it definitely comes into play because uh you buy things in cubic yards uh, i can tell you what i've bought in the last couple of years mulch gravel Um, dirt, topsoil, and uh, what you want is probably maybe three to five cubic yards, give you plenty of dirt or plenty of anything to keep you busy for a while, right? Uh, if you did the math, you know, three cubic yards would be a lot of wheel, I can tell you, I know this from, from experience, say five cubic yards. That's a lot of dirt or whatever it is you're, you're moving around. Shells is another one, right? Those um, like cohawk shells, which I have like in the garden. I've got, I got a few yards of those. I got about a yard left over. And uh, these are all cubic yards, right? So you got to be familiar with it. Of course, they can explain it to you at the, uh, where you buy them. And the other thing is concrete. by the cubic yard. None of these got anything to do with plumbing, right, at all. But in real life, yeah. This one, if you want to compare prices, concrete is usually sold by the cubic yard, you know, the stuff that comes in a truck, and you might want to compare it. This one also, I know there was a day when I had a choice of buying bags from Home Depot or buying some really good stuff uh, from a... Uh, supply a place on a route six the name escapes me now and uh, i did the math it was like the same price i was like why would i get the stuff from home depot where i have to physically carry every bag in my trailer back to the house where i could just have a dump truck like a little dump truck come and, and dump you know three four five yards uh for roughly the same price so it was convenient that i knew how to you know convert back and forth concrete um you would have that obviously for a foundation or whatever it is you were doing, but it's sold in the cubic yard. And I believe it's priced by the cubic yard price many years since I checked on it, but this would be say a hundred, maybe a hundred dollars a cubic yard. All right. This would be the stuff for your foundation wall or your footing. Okay. So there's two types of, uh, there's a couple of examples where you can use this beyond just for test purposes. See how we're uh, 
just doing here. Yeah, we got a little, a little bit more time. Okay, I'm going to move on. Now, if you have these sheets, if we get a chance, I don't know if Maureen downloaded these to you guys, but if she didn't and she gets a chance, I hope she does, but if she doesn't, just follow along as I, uh, as I write this stuff down, but you will have these sheets. Uh, the next one would be a, a pound of water and uh, how high it is, how high... Um, it takes to get one pound per square inch of water. In other words, you have, let's say, a PVC pipe and you drill the hole in it, you put a test, a very sensitive test gauge in it. How much water do you have to pour in that pipe before you get to one pound per square inch? All right. Now, before I even get there, uh, let's see. Water is, uh, you know, the, the, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with the book here. They, they're doing the... Uh, they're working with the water be, before they even get to the weight of it. Let's do the weight first, all right, which is the next one down. So this one here is a big one. Again, it's nice to know, but not something you really need that much. This is water, fresh water. Okay, I'm not going to mention that again. Salt water is a little lighter. For those of you, when you were, um, most of us are not, maybe not so much you guys, because you're still young and skinny for the most part. When you were young, if you remember, you go swimming like in a lake. Jeez, you have to keep moving or you're going to go right to the bottom. Um, salt water, you bob up a little high. Like I haven't been there, but uh, Utah, Great Salt Lake, they say you really float high there because the salt is, is so uh, intense. Uh, as you get older, you have more, insul I like to call it insulations, body fat. Fat uh, floats better. It's lighter. It's the way they used to measure the density. In World War II, there were some professional athletes that technically were too overweight, which usually meant fat. But these guys clearly weren't fat. And they figured out a way to like put them in water to get to see how much body fat they had. So as you get older, you float better. I float now. I can float, look around. I mean, I don't go down to the bottom anymore. So... Uh, that's so, especially in salt water. Fresh water is slightly different weight. Okay, salt water is just a bit lighter. But one gallon, for our purposes, equals 8.33 pounds. Okay, a gallon of water, like a pink can. No, not a pink can. Oh, it could be. But a, a gallon jug of water. The, the bottle weighs nothing, a couple of ounces. So it would weigh about 8.33 pounds. Right? So you can do the math. A quart would be what? Two and change, just over two for a quart. Okay. Now, how about a cubic foot? A cubic foot weighs sixty-two. This book has sixty-two and a half. That's good. Let's go with that. And it's not that I don't know it. I've seen it written down 62.48. Now, for somebody designing something important, very important, obviously they're going to go with 62.48. For our purposes, close enough. Okay, 62 and a half pounds. Now, look at the difference. A cubic foot is just a box, just like a, a tile on the floor, like a foot high. And this is like a barroom bet. You could have a bet how many gallons would fit into that that box and i'm sure most people would say man maybe three or four not really if you divide 8.33 into 62.5 you're going to get 7.7.5 if any of you have your phone handy you want to double check it go right ahead if you find out i'm wrong let me know but this is seven and a half gallons in a cubic foot. It doesn't seem possible, but it is. All right. That's heavy. Um, so one cubic foot, uh, a lot of weight. Now, there's a lot of different formulas. I mean, a lot of different ways that you can interchange these, these problems. Let's try one. Let's keep this up here. So three three gallons. I like this one because it's almost even. Equals 8.33 times three equals 
right? In other words, let's say you lost 25 pounds or worse, you put 25 on. It'd be like chugging or taking out three full gallons of water, right? Because our body is mainly as uh, pretty much, you don't, like I say, you go into water, you're pretty close to either sinking or just floating. So that's how much 25 pounds means. It's three gallons one way or the other, right? So if you weighed 25 pounds less five years ago, you got, you're got carrying around three gallons of water today that you didn't have then. So, which, you know, you get used to it, I guess, but going up and down stairs, running, things like that, it obviously can make a big difference. All right. Now let's try a uh, another problem. Let's say, what's the weight? Now that's one gallon. This is three gallons right here. So this is in gallons also right here. Now let's try a weight problem. If we have... Um, Three cubic feet equals how much weight? It'd be 62 and a half times three. Oops. I won't bet my life on it, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So that's roughly 100. Um, 87 pounds. Okay. So it's three times six is 18. Two and a half times. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Three times 60 would be 180. Okay. Which is probably the weight of a lot of you guys. All right. Somewhere in there. All right. Now you got to keep in mind, what are they looking for? Weight or volume? Let me show you. Let's try, uh, let's get rid of this. That's what I'm talking about. This is volume, not weight, right? So a cubic foot, you could dump three gallons of water in. It could be three gallons or anything for that matter, but it's always going to come out seven and a half to fill that up. So let's try this. Uh, two cubic feet equals how many gallons? Well, let's see. One cubic foot is seven and a half. Two would be two times 7.5. Okay, nice easy one. 15 gallons. All right? That's it. And if we have... How much do five gallons weigh? Again, don't forget, you're not looking for volume. This would be what? Two thirds of a gallon. But how much does it weigh? Well, each gallon weighs 8.33. So we'll take 8.33 times five. Okay. Now I know I'm going a little bit fast, but it's a video. So you guys can stop it, spin it back if you want and see what it is. This here, I would really learn. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you when something is useful for your license and on the outside or where it's just useful for your license. And otherwise it's not, not of much value after you get your license. This one here, not so much. It is nice to know about the weight of water, right? That is, the, that is helpful. How much a gallon weighs or whatever it is that you have. Now, real quick before I, I leave this, an example of something that's much lighter than water is gasoline, believe it or not. Now, in a gas trap, remember we were talking about a gasoline trap, and I think I did it with uh, tier two. Uh, there's a pipe that goes down to the, the bottom of the tank that takes the water out, and the gasoline floats on the top with the oil. Some will sink, I know, but water is heavier than mo uh, gasoline for sure. Gasoline is like, Maybe one of you guys know, some, we'll say seven. It's not in our book. 
not in this this form of the sheet, but it's, we'll say it's seven uh, seven pounds, right? It's considerably lighter than water. Okay, but this is fresh water, and that's all they deal with. They don't even talk about what it is, but it is fresh water. And the last thing I'm going to mention before we call it a a night on the formulas here is a cubic inch of mercury. Okay, mercury is extremely heavy. We don't use it much anymore. It used to be in our thermostats. All you guys will see these thermostats. will be around probably longer than some of you guys. Those old T87 Honeywell, very good thermostats. Now I know they're not, I don't think they're even available anymore because of the liquid mercury. But mercury is, uh, is very heavy. And uh, before we even get there, Okay, specific gravity of liquids. They use water because there's so much of it. All right? So everything's compared to water. Gasoline, lighter than water, less than one. Uh, it'd be, let's say, 0 0.75, 0 0.8. Um, mercury. equals 13.6. If anybody here, if you ever, especially when you were kids, maybe get up and play around with, with mom and dad's thermostat, you can feel the weight of the mercury in that glass vial moving back and forth. You can actually feel it because it's so heavy. It's 13.6 times heavier than water. All right, specific gravity of mercury. All right, of water is one. Sorry, I didn't mention that first. Mercury, 13.6. It's all referenced back to water. All right, now this would be liquid. And I'm only going to mention this because it's the other half. For gases, it would be air. And the value is specific gravity is one. Okay, uh, hydrogen, right? They used to fill up some of the uh, Zeppelins with it before they, they blew up. Uh, was much less than one. That's why it would float. It would lighter than air. Uh, for us, natural gas. Natural gas, we'll call it, uh, I don't know if it's 0. 0.6, but it's less than one. If it's less than one, it, it rises up. If it's a liquid less than one, it floats above the water. Okay? So uh, gas. Now, propane, a little heavier than air, would be one point something. It sinks to the floor, and you all know that you got to be careful. You get propane in a basement in particular. You might not even smell it, but it's going to sit on the floor, kind of like that fog from a dry ice, except you can't see it. It'd be very scary. So for um, specific gravity for uh, a liquid, it's water. It's one. For uh, a gas, it's air. It's also one. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to call it. It's getting, uh, yeah, it's going to get to be a long class. So I'm going to wrap it up right there. And for those of you with uh, these these sheets, uh, I ended. I'm still on the first page out of the three pages. Okay, I'll see you guys uh, back in class.